Good morning. Uh, many years ago, our cat, uh, Alphonse, uh, brought in a tiny, tiny, almost embryonic baby possum from outside. And uh, it was... Uh, I guess close to death, and Constance nursed it back to uh, to health. And we, uh, she raised it uh, to uh, to be a full blown big possum, and we loved it, and we called it Mister Kisses because it would uh, it would sit on your shoulder, and and he would slime my beard with kisses. So we called him Mister Kisses. And every, uh, every night, we, uh, Constance made a little harness for it. And every night she took it on a 90-minute walk around our neighborhood. And it was just the sweetest soul uh, in, the, in the world. Rabbi Ben Clifford would say that possums are sacred animals because their brains are so small that they have no ruach whatsoever, that, that they're just all neshama. But anyway, Mr. Kisses was was a dear friend, and actually, uh, uh, we grew to know it as uh, or him as a, as a spiritual being, and certainly a magical being, and I'm and everybody who loves their pets, of course, understands what I'm saying. But he was a very special friend, and we were very uh, uh, sad to lose him. Uh, possums don't usually live very long. But anyway, so Constance painted this picture of Mr. Kisses. And that's her. Uh, and Mr. Kisses there in that picture is sort of like uh, incarnated Tibetan Lama. And Constance is a devotee uh, holding the umbrella. And that's the same purple umbrella that she held for it. Uh, when it rained, when she walked it around every night. Isn't that a lovely picture? And on the, like she does on many of her paintings, Constance paints the, the edges of the frame too. Anyway, and Constance is very fond of dots. Look at all the dots dots everywhere. But anyway, and it's called I Cherish My Old Friends. And in these wild times, uh, I know of no better sentiment to, to start things off because I cherish my old friends and new friends too. So anyway, sorry for that little, that little detour. We're picking it up on the chicken tarot of the Chicken Kabbalah and the Chicken Tarot uh, chapter. And uh, we've just gone through sort of a lengthy uh, uh, interview with Augury Today magazine, a tarot magazine that uh, interviewed uh, Rabbi Ben Clifford many years ago. And uh, we're just getting into uh, where he is going to start discussing uh, the mysteries of the court cards and the small cards. So I, I hope you're comfortable. The magazine says, oh, that's absolutely amazing. I guess I always thought the traditional titles of the tarot cards were traditional. The rabbi just explained the astrological and, and Kabbalistic formula that uh, makes the c small cards, gives them their uh, general divinatory meaning in the titles. And the rabbi says, traditionally Kabbalistic. I want to wind this interview up. I'm really hungry. I promised to talk about the four princesses. These four maids are treated differently from the other twelve court cards. This stems from the Kabbalistic doctrine concerning the exiled condition of the human soul. 
Now, when I say exiled, I'm not referring to the old superstition about Adam and Eve getting kicked out of the Garden of Eden, and now we're un under some kind of bad juju from an abusive creator. And I'm certainly not talking about that obscene and perverted doctrine known as original sin. Whoever the ignorant, woman-hating, insecure, irrational, terrified, guilt-ridden, diabolical, self-despising horse's ass who, who it was came up with that diseased and malevolent concept should have been thrown into Nebuchadnezzar's Institute for the Criminally Insane. The ridiculous belief that humanity could be cursed and condemned to eternal torment because mythological characters fiddled with the wrong fruit has caused more suffering and mental illness than any other religious or political concept in history. And then the uh, rabbi gets so excited that he starts to cough. He says, coughing. It still amazes me that seemingly normal people, folks with pagers and computers, folks who can fill out their own tax forms and program their VCRs, can walk around and smile with this malignal, malignant spiritual tumor rested deep within their otherwise intelligent brains. It's not only absurd, it's downright toxic. The story of Adam and Eve was originally written as a Kabbalistic fable. It and many other holy scriptures were crafted to illustrate profound cosmological and spiritual principles. They were created by and for very smart and highly educated specialists in the field of spiritual literature. They are technical texts that were never intended to be consumed like horror comics and then misinterpreted to further the ambitions of mean-spirited religious bullies. And then the rabbi coughs some more. And others who just can't seem to cough, 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 see, can't seem to resist the temptation to enslave the minds and the sex lives of their fellow creatures. Coughing. <laughs> the rabbi is having a coughing fit. Rabbi, can I get you a glass of water? Rabbi, thank you, please. It gets me so mad. Sorry, where were we? And the magazine says, we were talking about the princesses. Right. Remember what I said about the four suits representing the four Kabbalistic worlds, and that the human soul is the microcosmic reflection of this gigantic four-part reality. In the magazine, yes, and that the four court cards in each suit are further subdivisions of all this. The rabbi, correct. And now think about the court card kings as representing Atzalath, the archetypal world, and at the same time representing the highest part of each of our souls, the Chai, the life force. The magazine says, okay. The queens represent the second highest world, Briya, the creative world, and our Neshama, our soul intuition. Princes represent Yetzirah, the formative world, and the Ruach of our intellect. And finally, princesses rule the lowest world, Asaya, the material world, and the lowest part of our soul, the Nepish, the animal soul. Do you follow me? And the magazine says, why, yes, amazingly enough, I do. The rabbi, okay, listen up. Asaya, the material world we see around us, is just the low, lowest vibratory expression of the universe. It's where the pure consciousness of deity is so slowed down, so doped up, that it actually crystallizes. 
It is where light and energy becomes matter and the invisible becomes visible. The nepish, the animal soul, is our own personal version of a saya. It is the only world our nepish recognizes. From this extremely limited point of view, both deity and you and me are trapped, exiled, in a frozen prison of matter. We are a princess who has forgotten her royal birthright. We have fooled ourselves into believing that Asaya is the only reality. We identify ourselves completely with this lowest level of divine consciousness and the lowest part of our soul. But there is a way out a way to escape the prison of matter and live in the bliss of the highest Kabbalistic world. A classic fairy tale shows us the way out. A princess, a daughter of a king and queen, is the victim of a magic spell and falls into a deep coma. A charming prince, also the son of a king and queen, sees the motionless perfection of this sleeping beauty and falls hopelessly in love with her image. Even though she's asleep and unlikely to respond in kind, the prince stoops down into her sarcophagus and kisses her. The pure love coursing through his lips is the magic that awakens the princess. She is lifted from her tomb and marries the prince, an act which simultaneously makes her the queen and him the king. That's where the fairy tale stops, but in the Kabbalah, the new king makes his new queen pregnant. After doing this, he rolls over and goes to sleep. The queen gives birth to twins, a prince and a princess, who leave the castle for adventures on their own. They get separated, she gets cursed, falls asleep, yada, yada, yada. We know the story from there. That's how kings are made. If there were no princesses, there would be no kings. She may be asleep, she may be slumbering in the deepest forest guarded by height challenged mining engineers, but without her redemption, the old sleeping king will never reawaken, and the entire electricity of the universe will be short circuit. This two in two way incestuous circuitry is the dynamo that creates and sustains the universe. And the magazine, magazine says, this is all very quaint, Rabbi, but how does it apply to, and then the rabbi interrupts, we're talking about you and me here, booby. The you you think is you is not you. The, it's a dream you. In fact, the you that you think is you is a dreamer inside a dreamer inside a dreamer. You are the king of the universe who has fallen asleep and is dreaming he is the queen, who has fallen asleep and is dreaming she is a prince, who has fallen asleep and is dreaming she is a sleeping princess. The first step in our return to our original estate is to trick our own prince into kissing us and waking us up. This is pretty difficult, but it's not impossible because we've all got one of these princes running around in the more awake world, in the more awake world. Even now, he's beating his fists against the lid of our glass coffin, trying to make us wake up so he can marry us and get on with his career. Modern Kabbalists 
magicians call this prince the Holy Guardian Angel and view the union with their Holy Guardian Angel as the first step to spiritual enlightenment. The magazine asks, how do we achieve union with our Holy Guardian Angel? You do it by falling head over heels in love with love. You do it by using your inner imagination to create the deity in the image of your most ideal lover. And then surrendering yourself completely and unconditionally. Now, this may sound uncomfortably like what Christians and Buddhists and Hindus tell you that you must do to their guys. And up to a point, it is. But no matter what they may tell you, no religion or creed can, can corner the market on this universal experience. It is totally universal and non-sectarian. It really doesn't matter what you call the object of your devotion. Or how you visualize it. Anything and everything is capable of being the focus for your love for the Holy Guardian Angel. Now, can you see why the princesses are so important? Like you and me, they are positioned at the lowest end of the elemental universe, but they embody the foundation of the entire universe and are the key ingredient to the great recipe of creation. And that's where we'll end Today, we'll pick it up uh, tomorrow, same time. I hope you've enjoyed this little excerpt, and uh, we'll soon be finished with the book. Uh, I really appreciate you being with me every morning and allowing me to uh, uh, come into your sequestered mystic's temple and do this every morning. So I want you to uh, uh, enjoy the rest of your day and and have a great weekend. I'll see you tomorrow, Saturday. And uh, be good to yourself. Continue to be good to yourself. And be good to each other. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love under will.